Good morning, and welcome to our morning prayer service for the seventh Sunday of Easter, also known as Ascension Sunday. My name is Ian Physick, and I am one of the lay leaders and youth ministry leads for the Brimley Road site. We hope that this worship today is enriching and a blessing to you all. The land that we are standing on today is the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Onishabeg, the Chippewa and the Haudenosaunee, and the Windat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lonely, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice onto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, 
and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus, O Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfaithfully believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
This reading is from chapter one of the Acts of the Apostles. There was a convention of members of the early Christian church being held at Jerusalem. The main item on the agenda was to choose a new apostle to replace Judas. Judas had taken his own life when he realized the enormity of the mistake he had made by betraying Jesus. You will note a few verses of chapter one have been omitted from the reading. They describe the gory way Judas killed himself. So if blood and guts is your kind of reading, you can read verses 18 to 20 in your own Bibles. Anyway, it was well known that the 11 apostles were going to choose a replacement for Judas. This would be the first and only time an apostle was replaced. There was an event of great interest, and you can be sure some of the crowd were there just so they would be able to say, I was there when the new apostle was chosen. Now, let's listen to the reading. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This has been the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the that bringeth forth his fruit in due season, whose leaf also doth not wither, and look whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so. taken from 1 John, chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. 
Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, And not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete 
in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Leo Tolstoy's first line in his novel, Anna Karenina is, all happy families resemble each other, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. What's fascinating about this is there have been a number of literary critics and social critics who've wanted to delve into this idea, unhappy families, comparing them uh, to happy families, and what is the difference? There seems to be a logic when you start to look at it. What makes families happy? And what makes other families unhappy? One literary critic uh, using this first line uh, came up with what's called the Anna Karenina Principle. Uh, which is what makes families happy. And this literary critic said that what makes families happy is good health of all family members, acceptable financial security, and mutual affection. There is a real logic to that idea. Uh, and, and social economists uh, also have delved into that similar saying what makes families stable and happy and what makes families unstable and unhappy. And I, I think actually the psalmist this morning, when we heard Psalm 1, uh, already is ahead of the curve because it, the psalmist today is delving into a, a, a variation of what points to stability and happiness, what is that Anna Karenina principle? Now, Christian theology, there's a concept of being disordered, meaning that when God sets out a precept for us to live by, and if we don't follow it, it will often end in people's life being disordered. Now, the psalmist talks about this in verse 4, and verse 3, uh, the psalmist said, They are like planted trees by the stream of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Yet the wicked are not so, but are like chaff, and the wind drives them away. But the, the verse talking about the wicked is talking about them being blown around by life, that uh, they are like dried up wheat and chaff, and, and their lives are thrown about uh, in a way, as the theologians talk about, their life is disordered. It's all people... Uh, following the Anna Karenina principle uh, that don't have good that don't have good health that don't get on with their families that uh, there's a great deal of sadness and disorder and yet it's not only the literary critics uh, there's been academic studies that have shown and stats can came out in 2015 and said that if a person 
finished high school, didn't have children until uh, after they were married, that they stayed in full-time employment, only 2% of that population fell below the poverty line. And it's interesting that someone in the United States did a, a similar study, similar things, keep jobs if you have them, don't give up a job till you get one, make sure you've, you have a, a, a trade and education, um, uh, don't have children out of wedlock. But they added something that if you have a, a substance abuse issue, if you can deal with that, it will make a big difference in one's life. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not calling anyone who has substance abuse difficulties or children outside of marriage or unemployed. Uh, they're not wicked. I'm, the, the, the Bible uses exaggerative language. But it does point to this Anna Karenina principle that there are things we can do when we root ourselves in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it can have a profound influence. As the text talks about being rooted by waters that feed us compared to those that aren't, that are blown away by water or by wind. And, and it's fascinating because I had a conversation with a former priest of mine who, who was born out and he said to me one time, he said, you know, when people become Christian, uh, important things that happen in their life, but it's often the small things that make the biggest difference. And he actually talked about knowing a number of people who struggled with addiction. And when they dealt with that, it made a profound influence. So some very little practical things can make a big and profound difference. And he said, particularly for people living on the margins, if they can uh, put their money towards healthier pursuits, it will make a major positive and often a, project, a, a, a trajectory out of poverty, and they are much happier. The psalmist talks about this and he says uh, that they that delight in the law of the Lord and those that meditate on it day and night they are like trees as I said are planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in season and their leaves do not wither uh, as those that do not comparing the the two those rooted in Christ have a strong root, and those that don't can be blown about by the wind. Absolutely, there are things in our lives that are beyond our control and, and can bring chaos, and it's nothing that we've done, but we can, in some ways, moderate chaos by living much stabler, healthier lives. And some of those first steps are, it's fascinating. I talked to a therapist once and he said that people who are struggling with some sort of issue, uh, and he told me that when people make that phone call to the therapist, they almost always feel better. It's that first little step that can go a long way towards their mental health. And so I think for all of us, we are called by God to make little steps. And, and God doesn't expect us to be transformed overnight. In fact, he thank him that he gives us a lifetime to grow towards the likeness of Christ. And we need a lifetime of it. And so because as, as disciples, it doesn't mean crisis and dilemma and failure, many things beyond our control, those things will happen. But it does mean as disciples, we can learn something. We can always root ourselves deeper into Christ. And we can be strengthened by 
the stream of Christ in our life. And the image of that tree by the river, that tree starts out as a little sapling, and that sapling will grow into a small tree, and that small tree will go, grow into a larger tree. And so that is that image of us as we mature over time. And it's fascinating that uh, it talks about these trees planted by a river. And, and in the Middle East, which is mostly desert, there are things called wadis, which are dried up riverbeds. But at certain times of year, uh, the rains come and the water flows down the river. And it's extremely important in that, and you can find through the centuries, the millennia, that settlements would be built by these wadis because they knew water would come. And if you actually dug in the, in the wadi beds, you could often find water. So because you don't see sustenance there, it doesn't mean it's not. And I think that's a great example that Christ with us can bring nurture and strength, sustain us. So when those troubled times arise, when the wind whips up, we don't become like chaff. We that are rooted in God we that delight in the law of the Lord. This passage lets us reflect that we don't have to be like the chaff. We can reflect on and say, Lord, what are those things that help me move my life forward, that, that put me in uh, a better place, that gives me strength and sustenance? And so the Anna Karenona principle of looking after one's health, keeping yourself in a, 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 a healthy financial situation, keeping yourself in a healthy relational situation, keep yourself in an emotionally healthy situation, and caring for those closest to you will always go a great way in making us healthier and happier. All families resemble each other, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. 
and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin. Neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
In our Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In our Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend Michael Olton Bishop and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Ontario. In our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for Bishop Sid Hogan, the people and rostered ministers of the Saskatchewan Synod. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the North Peel Deanery. In our outreach and advocacy prayer cycle, we pray for St. Hilary Cooksville, its food cupboard, annual outreach fundraising walk to support local and global outreach, community vegetable garden, involvement in making bed mats for Haiti, and knitting garments for the hospital patients, and its Amnesty International Circle, for St. Hugh and St. Edmund and its community youth ministry, and for St. James Cathedral, its drop-in for homeless and street-involved people, refugee sponsorship, participation in hub, and support of local agencies providing care to the homeless, underhoused, and underserved. In our parish today, we pray for all parish families, especially for Hector, Belinda, Kendra, Kim, Cassidy and Kayla, Evelyn, Lenomi, Chris and Detra, Gloria, Joyce, Lance and Claire, Diane and Murray, Dawn and Elizabeth. We pray for those with immediate needs, Greg, Maria, Floyd, Lucy, Michelle, Lisa, Wendy, Doug, Jose, Dunstan, Ipsita, Esther, Maria, Jason, Andrea, Brenda, Pat, Joe, Reeve, Beverly, Derek, Marie, Barry, Andy, Nigel, Linda, Doreen, Layla, Tatiana, Audrey, and Maida. We pray for those with ongoing challenges. Diana, Dawn, Janice, Marjorie, May, Murray, Rosaline, Joan, Candace, Randy, Clovis, Rosalind, Kathleen, Mike, Joan, Lionel, Monica, and Rajiv. This week, we celebrate the birthdays of Pauline, Lenomi, Kim, Lloyd, and Thomas. A very happy birthday to each of you. For the faithfully departed, we remember before God Dan Lacan, who died of COVID-19 this week. Before March 2020, she was a faithful Wednesday morning volunteer at St. Ninian's Food Bank. In memorial today, we remember Ivy Spencer, Anne O'Dell, Joan, Bill, and Bruce Lockhart. All are lovingly remembered by the Mercer and Lockhart families and friends. Kate Walters is also lovingly remembered by her daughter, Amy, and family and friends. May Dan, Ivy, Anne, Joan, Bill, Bruce, and Kate rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princess, who dost from thine throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to, be, to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strength her, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon her bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, 
pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine worthy servants to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill, no, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. There are no official announcements today. However, please join us next week on Zoom as we celebrate together Pentecost Sunday. And thank you for joining us this week. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.